Okay, we're live on Facebook. You don't have to turn them up, but okay. no. <laughs> we're not on the radio yet. You can wave. <laughs> yes. <laughs> can you, you can bring your microphone up just oh, a little bit. Okay. Yours fine. Thank you. There you go. Well, I can look down at my notes. You can I... totally look down. I have notes, too. Okay. It's like we're official news reporters. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, intro music. So I can have people go on to Facebook afterwards? Yeah. Or? Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the 425 Show. I'm your host, Nicole Mangina, with Windermere Real Estate. Because buying and selling houses is as much about having an agent that knows your specific market as it is about having someone that knows all of the amazing people and businesses and events that make this a really fantastic and amazing place to live. It's Tuesday morning. We are officially one week from Christmas. Woo! Woo yeah! I know. <laughs> uh, it's good times. I did my last online ordering this morning. I begrudgingly paid a little extra for some delivery charges because I realized I wasn't quite as on it as I thought it was, but you know what? It's all good. It'll all be here in time. And it's interesting. People are often um, surprised to find out that this is actually a really busy time for real estate. You often think, well, everybody's off doing their holiday things, which is part of what makes it a great time. It can be a good time to move because most people either have the time off already or it's an easy time to take time off because everybody else is distracted. It's not usually a super busy time at work. So it's a good time to move the week between Christmas and New Year's is also, it's a lot like the Thanksgiving week for me. It's when the seeds start to germinate for, okay, people want to buy or sell next year. And that's when people start reaching out to get things going because the first half of the year is usually when the market is the strongest. So if you're thinking about real estate, I invite you to reach out. I would love to chat with you, help you come up with a game plan so that you have a successful 2020, whether you're buying, selling, or both. You can always find me via email, nicole at nicolemangina.com. And without further ado, I'm excited for our guest today, an amazing person. You have been a part of the community for quite some time. Um, Marcia Whitney with the Eastside Tennis Center and the Tennis Outreach Program. Thank you for being here this morning. Well, thank you for having me. This is a great pleasure and it's going to be a lot of fun. It is. I know. We, um, we were chatting before the show. You guys have such an amazing program um, with the Tennis Center and this Outreach Program. Uh, and I, I love anything that is not only part of the community, but involved in giving back to the community which is what the outreach program does. So I'd love to know a little bit more about it and how you got involved with it. Okay, well, um, I started the tennis outreach programs in 2002. Okay. And I saw a need for um, youth that cannot afford to play tennis. Mm -hmm. I was working at the Redmond Community Center and um, it's right across the playground of Redmond Elementary. Sure. And um, met I knew the gal that was running the after school programs for the low income kids and as I looked into it I was just amazed of the pockets of low income kids that are within our area. There's more than people realize. There is. We assume that we're an affluent area and we are but there are more pockets of people in need they are. than people realize. We have schools in the Bellevue district and the cross Crossroads area that are 49% around free lunch and wow. assistant lunch. That's amazing. Uh, we have Juanita Elementary. We have um, a lot of different schools that we have gone into. Mm -hmm. And we call it Wake Up to Tennis. Love it. And we go into the schools or they can come to us. Mm -hmm. Either way, we work it out. And uh, we have taken a survey. They, are, they get to school on time because they come yes. early. Then they go over and have their breakfast. Mm -hmm. Their attention span was better in school. Their peer uh, interaction was better. Their grades were better. That's they great. just had a little more self-worth in the sense and confidence mm -hmm. in what they can do, not knowing how to play tennis, but had something that was theirs yes. that they could do. And for several years, we scholarshiped all the kids that came through uh, at the Redmond Community Center, and it was $20 for eight weeks. Love it. And okay. uh, so we, they didn't have to pay anything. And then mm -hmm. they graduated out of the program into junior high. We had equipment for them, shoes, clothing, so they would just fit right into the group. And that's what we do at Eastside Tennis Center under our mm -hmm. nonprofit tennis outreach programs. And 
and uh, we mainstream all the kids. A lot of the coaches don't know who's who's scholarshiped, uh -huh. which we like to keep them anonymous, but they fit in really well. And if they need the equipment and shoes and clothing, we're able to provide that for them. And it's because of donors mm -hmm. um, from different businesses that are able to donate us some clothing that they had left over in their um, inventory sure. and, and people that come in, they donate clothes and, mm -hmm. and it's just a great community to be a part of. That's wonderful. And so we're able to do that and we start at age three and go all the way through adults and have a whole circle path. We have recreational paths where they start in recreationally if they really like it. Mm -hmm. They go into the excellent program and then from there to high performance and we have over 30 young people that are ranked in the nation. Wow. And even some in the world uh, that play out of there and practice. So it's, and then of course, we don't want to forget our adults. We have a lot of, a lot of teams. We average about 70 teams a year. Oh, that's a lot. For adults, mm -hmm. uh, for USTA leagues and stuff. So we have a lot going on there. Okay. And it's just a lot of fun. That's awesome. Well, and you mentioned it um, when you first started talking about, you know, sports for kids can be life changing in yeah. so many ways. There's certainly the athletic part of it, mm -hmm. and I think that's what most people, and me included, you go to initially, but really the benefits are so far beyond the physical fitness part of it. The fitting in is huge. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad was in the military, and so we moved every couple of years. And for both my sister and I, we did a lot of sports because that really helped form those friendships yes. much faster and much stronger than just being the new kid in class, mm -hmm. right? That sometimes yeah. was a little bit tough, but if you could get involved in something, it really made a huge difference. Oh, it has, I've seen, I've been blessed and fortunate to see a lot of kids grow up through the, going mm -hmm. through the program. And I get, every once in a while, I get comments or a letter or an email from someone mm -hmm. that says, coach, it's because of you that I was able to put myself through college. You gave me the opportunity to learn how to coach. That's life changing. And I did and I was able to do that. That's um, great. We have kids that are have medical issues mm -hmm. and have a hard time focusing and interacting with kids mm -hmm. and we're be able to because of our quality of our coaches right. and the patients that they have and and we you know train them and get more information if they need it that they they really learn how to work with kids mm -hmm. that are hard to integrate in other areas sure. in their life. And then we have an adaptive tennis for young adults, and we have that. We have some coaches that are doing an incredible job with those young people. They, some of them come and they wouldn't, couldn't talk. Really? And they didn't know how to interact, and now we have some kids that are talking to each other. Oh, that's so sweet. And we have that or just feel so much better about themselves and they look forward to it you know each week and mm -hmm. they come in. so it's just really rewarding to be able to give give back to these kids and young people uh, something that they may never have a chance to you know have yeah for sure and to have a positive role model is huge so um we have great staff that are good role models which is mm -hmm. pretty pretty fun yeah yeah that's pretty great. You had something on your website, I was looking at it yesterday, um, strategic management versus crisis management. <laughs> that really hit home. I thought that was so perfect and a beautiful analogy for really the role that sports can play yes. um, or you know, some kind of extracurricular activity for kids as you grow into adulthood. Mm -hmm. Um, because it doesn't always go the way you want it to when you're doing whatever your athletic endeavor is. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> How much we wish it would, but you know, it's, it's part of life and the growth. Absolutely. Um, I've even watched it with our boys. We're big baseball people mm -hmm. in our house. And you know, when you're younger and something doesn't go your way, it's usually the umpire's fault. Of course. <laughs> It's an easy, easy place. It is, those darn umpires. <laughs> <laughs> but as you get older, you realize, well, maybe it wasn't totally their fault. Yeah. <laughs> and then it opens the door to deal with it in a right. different way, um, you know, and have a different experience, which well, is nice. And that's, that's why we try to have our coaches understand that, too, and try to help the child work through it. Right. 
and the earlier we can get them to do that, mm -hmm. the easier it's going to be for them, hopefully, as they get older and get more into the competition to understand, yeah, this is just, you know, this is just a game, but I still want to win it, but how can I do it without overreacting? Sure. And so it's, again, I can't say enough about our staff, that they do a great job in working with those young people. And that's, I mean, that is a special gift and talent. Mm -hmm. So again, if you're just tuning in, we have Marcel Whitney joining us with the Eastside Tennis Center and the Tennis Outreach Program. You have some of the most amazing services and programs out there um, here on the East Side for we, kids. We do enrichment programs also. Oh, great. Uh, and what that is, that is, well, our facility is public, mm -hmm. uh, open to anyone, like we have a model tennis for everyone. And our enrichment programs is we do it once a month and we bring in a speaker to mm -hmm. talk about different things. And one of the things, there's a couple that really, uh, we have a great coordinator that works on this. Uh, last year we, during this time, we had the youth, uh, homeless youth come okay. in. Um, and uh, they talked to the kids that were there. We have about average of 30, 30 young people mm -hmm. and adults there. And they talked about how, as a teenager, what they did bed hopping. Oh, and, interesting. And then, uh, then the kids got to ask them questions. Mm -hmm. And then what we did is put packages together for them. We put socks and and hats and food and razors, toothbrushes mm -hmm. and toothpaste. I mean, the kids had the opportunity to put those together. Oh, sweet. And then we delivered it to uh, mm -hmm. the friends of youth. And it made an impact on some of those kids. They sat there and they, and these are, some of these kids are seven, eight years old. Mm -hmm. The questions that they asked yeah. were profound. Really? In, in the sense like of. Like what, what were some so, of their questions? Well, how, how did you get, become homeless? Mm -hmm. uh, what do you do when you don't have a place to stay? Mm -hmm. um, and then some said, well, how, what do you need from us? You know, oh. kids sort of think more about who was there. Sure. And they weren't thinking of themselves. But it's just really neat to see them. Kids are much more attention. observant and aware than I think we give them credit they for. They are. And I am constantly amazed and be wonderfully um, inspired by the questions children ask. Mm -hmm. And so. for the males of youth, you can learn a lot if you take time to listen mm -hmm. to it. So I've learned a lot from them. Yeah, so. that's great. I remember our youngest when he was really little, like probably five, we would adopt a family and you know mm -hmm. we still give back and things like that and so we were shopping for this family and I remember our youngest he was so sweet it's like why are we doing this I said well because you know some people don't have as much he said oh well how come Santa doesn't take care of all of that wow. so oh, yeah. it was I then you know as a parent you're like okay I'm in the middle of Fred Meyer how what do I say now <laughs> like well listening. his sleigh's only so big and he can only so we're helping him out it's a team effort like Santa got some on the list where he can only fit so much Okay. <laughs> that was great. Good job. <laughs> like, I, I think I can work with that. I'm like, whoo. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think it's really important and powerful for um, kids to see that there are people come from different experiences. Mm -hmm. And that give the feeling of helping somebody else um, is not lost on a child. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's great. And, so, and then we have um, people come in and talk about... Uh, anti-bullying. Oh, sure. How to handle that. We mm -hmm. have a speaker coming for that. And so we're always looking for people to come in that would be relevant to our clientele. Sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've had some great opportunities to reach out to the community with these uh, different people. And it's, it's just been such a joy to be able to do that. That's great. So. Well, and I love that you are a public facility and kind of open to everybody mm -hmm. because tennis is not always that way, right? <laughs> we have three, well, three public facilities in, great. The, in, in King County. Oh, that's great. Where are they? Uh, Amy E. Okay. One that's run by the city. And then we have um, Robinswood. Okay. So Robinswood is South Bellevue. Mm -hmm. and, and then Amy where's... A, excuse me. Amy E. is on Martin Luther King Way. Okay. Right. And so those are public facilities and they're subsidized by the city. We're, we're blessed to have angel donors to help subsidize us. And okay. Our, and our clientele that comes to pay to play. Okay. And then we have an annual auction and annual breakfast fundraisers 
to um, help with that also. <coughs> That's great. In fact, if somebody is listening and they would like to donate um, in some way to help support this, how could they do that? What's the best way for them to donate? They can do, they either can call us and do it okay. over the phone with a credit card. They can go online and okay. donate and they can mail a check. All right. So, and they can, we always can use volunteers, especially around our fundraisers and the sense of those uh, auction, you know, time. Perfect. Okay. And uh, our spring breakfast that's coming up. Great. So. Okay. And what's your website for that? Our website is topskirkland.org. Okay. T-O-P-S Kirkland.org. Mm -hmm. Great. So you can go there. You can also go to our website after the show as well, nicolemangina.com forward slash podcast. If you want to find out more about the tennis programs, either for children or adults, adults. or to donate. Um, tell us a little bit about the adult programs that you have. We have um, we have cardio. Okay. Monday through Thursday from 9.15 to 10.15. Okay. And right now, uh, up until, up through the 23rd of this month, it's half price, $10. Okay. And for an hour, and it's drop-in. Great. And then you can bring, a f your first time is free. Okay. So you can bring a friend, and they can be free for the first time. Got and it. then starting in the beginning of the year, it'll be up to $20 again. Okay. It's Monday through Friday, every day. Cardio, like are you playing tennis oh, cardio? Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Keeping them moving, getting your heart rate up. Okay. And hitting. We have um, different levels uh, for the adults, like two, five beginners that never had tennis before. Okay. And then it just goes on up with the skill level on that. Okay. Uh, well, I'm not, we're not necessarily unique in this, but we do, um, going back to the youth, I'm sorry. Sure, no, that's is okay. That, uh, we have age groups for them, and we have like court jesters, hits and giggles, super minds, <laughs> superstars, <laughs> aces and champs, and all that, and go all the way up through high school teams. Mm -hmm. We start at, a, at an age with, without knowing mm -hmm. their skill, and then once we get to know their skill, we move them by skill and not by age. Got so it. we can have a seven-year-old with some nine or ten-year-olds. Sure. Because of their skill level and mm -hmm. their maturity to listen and participate. So that's what's neat about the program is that you have to you don't have to wait until you're nine before you can play with eleven year olds Great. if your skill and maturity warrants it. Perfect. And with the adults, it's by skill level, mm -hmm. and uh, so we have classes from two old up to three five. Okay. So there's all levels there, and we, like I said, we have various teams that you can get on. We have mixed doubles. We have women's teams. We have men's teams, mm -hmm. and so. That is one of the things I like about tennis. It's such a social sport, it and it's something you can do for an extended period of time. I've had 80-year-olds and older. Playing really? Tennis. Playing tennis? Mm -hmm. I love it. And then we also do have some pickleball. Okay. Balls. And so our, that's, that's really in short um, pockets just because the pickleball is quite, quite loud. Is it? And so because of the noise in there, and we're in a warehouse, and so oh, sure. it echoes quite a bit. So we have specific times that they can come in and, Got and do that. But we have a pickleball tournament uh, the 27th through the 29th that anyone can... Of uh, December? Of December. I love it. That they can register and uh, get All into right. the tournament well, if they like. post-holiday activity yes. would be good. So um, okay, we had it last year, and it's... Uh, in the, in and that's in Kirkland, right? It's in Kirkland. Okay, it's at your just, facility there. Yes, it's just south of uh, Brim Meyer, right. 120. Okay, perfect. Pickleball's fun. It is. It's a fast, <laughs> it's a fast game. <laughs> a little easier on the knees, though, too. Oh, there you go. Older people. <laughs> Smaller court, <laughs> but faster. How did you get into tennis? Interesting question. Um, in this, I was an athlete when mm -hmm. I was growing up, and I played all the sports, mm -hmm. and one day I saw Billie Jean King on TV and sure. I said, that's what I want to do. Really? Not necessarily go professional. Mm -hmm. I come from a family of teachers. Okay. And I said, but I want to be involved in tennis. And Great. so I, that's what took me right into that sport. Because like I said, when I played all sports mm -hmm. and did, did well back then. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I got into it. And I said, that's what I want to do. I started to educate myself. Uh, got certified in a couple of you know tennis organizations and just have a heart for young people yes. and I sort of just followed my dad's footsteps yeah um, you're he, still he, a teacher you just yeah have a different classroom yeah I do I have the best <laughs> classroom there is to have that much fun and to uh, be able to 
give back and mm -hmm. enjoy it. It's just, I'm just blessed to be able to do that. That's great. So. When do you have your auction, your fundraiser? Uh, I think it's in the fall. Correct? Yes, our fall auction is October 17th. Okay. Uh, this last year we had it at the Marriott in Redmond. Nice. And we're hoping to do that again this this fall. Right. And then we have our spring breakfast, if I could say that, April 30th yes. at the Bellevue Club. Oh, there you go. And that's open to the public. We okay. had, um, I was going to tell you our speaker, I'm embarrassed now, he's Channel 5 sports speaker. Um, Paul Sylvie? No. No. Oh, I'm you know, sorry. Don't, okay. I hope he doesn't That's see okay. this. <laughs> <laughs> it's all I'm good. Sorry. <laughs> so, He'll come to me. That's all right. Um, but that's great. You've got a breakfast at the oh, end. Chris Egan. Okay. Me. Oh, Chris Egan. Oh, yeah. Great, great speaker. He great played, guy. He yeah. played tennis. He had a message for the audience, and we had a young, young gal that spoke also. It was just really, really nice. Oh, so, that's wonderful. Perfect. But and you'll do it again in April. We're going to do it again in April. All right. Actually, we're looking for a speaker that would like to come and share with us, too. All right. All you tennis <laughs> people out there. Um, perfect. We'll make sure we have links to that as well on the website after the show, NicoleMangina.com forward slash podcast. Whether you can make the breakfast or not, such a good organization to be a part of. Well, thank you. And to donate to. That's wonderful. And Bellevue Club's always a fun venue, too. It is. It's very so. nice. They're very, very good. Great. And in serving us and taking care of us. So. Wonderful. Yeah. What else should we know about the TOPS program and the Eastside Tennis Club? Well, I was going over the different um, favorite places of mm -hmm. 425. Yes. And in different organizations, and I saw Bayless Architect. Oh, there you go. He is our designated architect to build our public tennis facility in Marymore Park. Oh, wonderful. That's awesome. And so we've been in the process for many years, and I hope they, they don't get in too much trouble with the parks. I said this. <laughs> uh, uh, but we've been working with them, and hopefully we'll get everything put together. And Are you building and an indoor facility now? We are. <gasps> really? Mm -hmm. At Marymore Park. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. So we're, we're working on that, and so hopefully that everything will come together and that will happen. Oh, yes. cool. Keep my fingers crossed yes. on that one. That's exciting. Yeah. I love Marymore Park. Yeah. That is just the coolest place on the planet. It is. We spend a lot of time there, um, and I just love it. There is it's the most attended park, I think, in the King County. Mm -hmm. I believe it. So. Um, I was talking with a builder, and he equated it to, for, especially for the people that live downtown Redmond, it's almost like a, like Central Park. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. And kind of is in yeah, some ways. Yeah, it is. Right? It's just, it's, there's it. all kinds of stuff in there when you get in and start yeah. weaving around, and um, it's a pretty cool place. That's yeah. awesome. Very cool. What are some of your other favorite things about the 425? Oh, I have a list of them. I was trying to narrow it down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How can I narrow down 19 things? I know. It's hard. <laughs> There's a I, lot. There's more than that, too. Um, but I did uh, have to mention this. He always gets the PR, but Russell Wilson reminded me that um, it's my first game at this uh, that I'll be able to go to. December 29th, of all games, I'm able to get to go to that. Oh, that'll be a big game. It will be. San Francisco. Yes, and so right. um, I was able to get it at the auction. You did? The tickets were available, and so I was I was the winning bidder, and I That's didn't go to it. Great, that'll so, be a good one. Yeah. Have so, fun. So with the Seahawks, and always a fan of them in there, um, 12 Baskets. I gotta mention oh, them yes. because great they, catering. They catered our um, they catered our uh, auction. We've had it at this tennis center. We sure. would lay down the tarps, take down the nets, big production to get it all ready, and they're just around the corner for us. And they have done a wonderful job for us. They're really good. Their food caterer. is excellent. It was always um, tasty and warm, and but the facility wasn't warm. <laughs> <laughs> so we, so that's why we, you know, went into the venue of yeah. a hotel to sure. get a little more comfort. But Twelve Baskets is excellent, and they cater. They do great work, and they do a wonderful job. So, uh, so those are one of the with that. Um, of course, yes, I have several. But oh, let's hear it. Let, mole, you have mulbacks on your list. I have mulbacks on my. I love mulbacks, especially, especially this time holiday. of year. <laughs> yeah, you go there and just walk to, through and look at the poinsettias. Yes. It's mind-blowing how many different types of poinsettias there are. 
you know, I assume that it's like the red and the white you can get at the grocery store, mm -hmm. but they have like a dozen different colors um, and the most beautiful displays. Yes. It's really pretty. I just pretty. love doing that. So we go in there during the holidays at mm -hmm. least and go through that. Just it gets you in the, sort of in the spirit too. It kind of does, right? The, All the know, lights and the yeah. trees and it's really fun. So Mo Mobax is a great place. Great. Um, uh, let's see. Of course, my airline of choice is Alaska Airlines. Yes. Uh, we fly into Denver okay because my son and wife and our three grandchildren are there yes and so even though they have one gate mm -hmm. at Denver Airport we still get the flights that we want yeah I've flown really in nice. and out of Denver on Alaska they're great they the are. times always seem to work just fine oh yeah and so, so that's you at first we go only one gate what happens you know type of thing and it's been very yeah they work it out good. yeah, yeah so. that's awesome on that and uh, I, I am a bargain shopper. I <laughs> so, love a good bargain. <laughs> uh, Valley Village has gotten me a lot of tennis equipment and oh, prizes for the kids. Uh, so that's always fun to, I love right. to go in and find something, you know, a used racket that we can use. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, treasure hunting. And so for it, that's what I do a lot of that to, because if you came to the center, which you're more than welcome to do that, we'd love to show you around that we have a storage area and we have these big bins and it is full of teaching aids. And some oh, people sure. say toys and stuff like that. I said, no, these are teaching aids. There you go. Potato, we, potato. Yes. Okay. And so we work with three and four year olds. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that you need to keep their attention mm -hmm. to uh, get, give them some teaching skills. I mean, athletic skills. And so that is full of teaching aids. And a lot of it comes from Value Village there and go. Goodwill. That's perfect. And grass sales. So. I love it. <laughs> awesome. What's your one favorite holiday thing to do in the 425? Like, I love always going to the botanical gardens. Oh, I just nice. love their lights. I do too. Oh, the Bellevue Snowflake Lane. Oh, the Snowflake Lane. Oh, the kids so love it fun. and have it just snow and just. I know, and each the year they make it a little bit more special. Yeah. Always special, but each year they yeah. add something, so it's always fun to go yeah. every year. So we take the grandkids, and that's. That's what's fun, is to see their expression, their excitement, and how they talk about it. And, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's a very good time. It is. Wonderful. Well, thank you for joining us today. I so appreciate you being here. Well, thank you. I appreciate it being able to do this. Yeah. Um, awesome. Again, we've had Marcel Whitney on the show with us today with the Eastside Tennis Center and the TOPS um, Tennis Outreach Program. And we'll have information on how to either get involved or donate to them on the website after the show, nicolemangina.com forward slash podcast. Have a great holiday, everybody. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.